Who has demos? Shasman, do you have one? Do you want to show the SQL indexing, field indexing? I think we already did that, but... We already did. Okay, I don't remember that. Um, Dean. Dean. Maybe. Maybe he lost his sound. Okay, so he'll be back. Um, Benedict. That's nothing interesting. That one reminds me of what uh, Isham is doing. So let's look at what Isham is doing. And what do we have? We have Jean-Philippe who just joined, but he said to me he could not do a demo, otherwise he will have, so next time. Um, and yeah, we'll see what's going on by looking at the PRs, if, if I don't forget about topics. Um, so first, commits on Orchard 1. So Dean has sound. So we'll see if Dean can do a demo later. So updates on Orchard 1. Too many updates on Orchard 1, actually. I'm sure already last week. Boom. Okay. Seven days. Seven days. Uh, good style. I th maybe we've seen that. No, we've seen that. Drying, we've seen drying a lot. Uh, content type, so this is 110x. Content type fixing that a validation error when adding the first field to a type breaks fields for that type. Wow. Yeah, I actually reported this issue. I don't know, it, it's, it's, uh, I think it's among my, one of my first issues in Orchard, or maybe in the top 10, okay. or, or first 10. So it's, it's, it's a really old issue, and there were other reports of, of the same behavior. Uh, so it's fixed now. Basically, the, the the funny thing that happened is that if you had a validation error when you are adding a, a, the first field to a content type, the kind of uh, implied content part was created anyway, but with the incorrect uh, with an incorrect name, I think. Okay. If I remember correctly, but it's fixed now. Fixing previous breaking change in validation. Okay, so yeah, you fix the fix. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I broke it a little bit and fix it. <laughs> Missing T strings and new placement shape fixing. Okay. Okay, well, that we don't care. Text. Okay, good job. Missing localization text. And this. Um, <clears throat> nope. Nope. Bad change. Uh, so uh, the display <laughs> name is already sanitized, and we yeah, and actually sure. we had we already had HTML dot row in like. 50% okay. of the cases where it's used. I, sure. um, that's I'm a, not... That's not the issue. Yeah. The issue is what I highlighted. So yeah. what, what you're doing here is calling dot text on that thing. And I'm almost certain that doing dot text will give you the encoded thing behind that as, um, a, as a string. Try it, okay. put, put some HTML here, and look at the doc text. It should be encoded. 
Okay. Then this is a string which is encoded. When you will okay. So it depends on how title is done. Okay, sorry. I forgot it was layout. I thought it was a variable that would be do, done like with at, but it's layout.title. So now we need to check actually how is the layout.title string rendered. If it's done with at our bus, then it will be double encoded in this case. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I think it's not because um, I've seen cases where, so the HTML role is actually needed there so for, that if I have here. an accented character, yeah. yeah, if I have an accented character, then it's displayed correctly and that that's correctly displayed now. And you say we do that in some places for the well, yeah, in, in the in the Orchard of Content Types module, it was used in like yeah, fifty percent of the cases, and in a previous change, I actually applied everywhere because even the the structure of the, of these titles were kind of different in in uh, in some cases. So I I kind of standardized it and also added HTML as row everywhere, so the accented characters are displayed correctly. So what happens if you put an accent in display name? Well, if you don't uh, if you don't have HTML dot row, then it's uh, it's encoded. Uh, yes, but will it be displayed correctly? Oh no, no, no. So yeah, what I meant is that you actually see you know ampersand whatever. Okay. Component. So I think that's an issue because if you see that, it means I think that it, okay. So two 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 things. Either arguments will be encoded automatically, which might be the case, or there is a double encoding issue that you saw. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of two string, which is the same thing as the text. And then you are fixing this part with the row, but you're not fixing the file that is double encoded in this case here. So you should also try to put some HTML here to see if it appears to see if there is a double encoding issue. And if there is, then your first issue was because of the double encoding and not because of missing the row. Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. Um... Because you should not have to do a row on a display name. Because then, let me inject some script. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, good good point. That's actually sanitized, but I, I see what you mean. So, so first, try to put some HTML here, just to see if it's rendered as is or double encoded. If it's double encoded here, it means there is a double encoding issue. Yeah. Which will be the trigger of your first issue. So if you fix the double encoding, then you will not see the issue here. Yeah, and, and just, just to see the HTML dot row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, actually we have an, an open, I'm not sure, I think there's an open pull request for a similar case with audit trail. So that might be the same. Thing, okay. Actually, uh, so I check. Maybe, maybe we can, maybe we can fix both in in Let's a different see. way. Just yeah. First, um, the same. No, the same. Mm, so there's an actual link when you are looking at the content type listing that says list items, and that was using Creatable before before listable was added. Okay. So I added, updated this uh, to use listable instead because that's what, the, what it corresponds to. Um, okay. Null check. Okay. Yeah, don't forget the curly braces, right? <laughs> Hello, feature prefix override on table db name. I think you you fixed this one as well. Partially. Maybe. Yeah, I, I remember you edited it online. But, but by the way, that requires a permission from the PR author, so I can't do this but for every PR, unfortunately. That's weird because by default the permission is enabled. 
you can just disable the permission on a per on a per repo basis. So maybe yeah. someone yeah, I know, but in some cases it's it's. Disabled. I've never had that. I've never seen that. Oh, well, uh, I was unlucky then. Okay. <laughs> Um, removing resource definition that CDN supports SSL because because it's not it doesn't matter in this case CDN supports SSL we decided that either the CDN supports SSL and then the URL should be SSL yeah or it should be um, protocol agnostic with a slash slash and and this option should not exist because yeah. actually it was not working correctly yeah the funny thing is that. Um, this feature also, all, well, not the feature, but the setting also existed on one and X, but it didn't do anything at all. Mm -hmm. So it, there was no check or anything. But in dev, it was actually implemented, and there was some logic, logic attached to it, and that's what's been removed here. Okay. I think styling to recipe. Yeah, a bit of display. nice styling, which is not very nice, but yeah, we, we have some cases like that in the admin. Okay, good job. Thank you, Benedek. Sure. Um, by the way, if we have time on Thursday, yep. there are a couple of PRs I'd like to discuss with you, but we don't need to do that now. Okay. No. Nope. So yeah. Thursday. PRs, bugs. Um, thanks a lot. Orchard Core. Lots of PR merged. So seven days. We had this one, but I think we saw that documentation of search query in the tab. Yeah, I remember that. Then, so let, what is the dev branch? This is a dev branch. This is the one on the left. So here, what is this branch? Uh, core three zero. It's the one on the right. Okay. So these are just merges and three zero changes. So readme dash, dash add tutorial. What is that? Oh, yeah, so it's a link to uh, a link about, so it's a link to a YouTube video about queries, how to use them, how they are used from the documentation page. And I don't, so apparently a year ago, I made a video that lasted two hours and I talk about queries. And this is a pointer to this thing. I don't recall it at all. Uh, I assume this is at the time I was doing some videos on Fridays just to show the concept and they are still valid. So that's good. Good pointer to when you, how you, if you want to see something, how it works. Um, sound is good now. That's what I missed. Okay, I didn't miss anything. Add liquid example for content culture picker from Jean-Philippe. So, uh, content culture picker. Picker. Read me content culture picker. Didn't we remove that? Confused now, because I remember a discussion when we say we could use culture info directly and not culture view model. Yeah, we refactored after. Okay, thank you. So I will see that later. Refactor culture picker shape. Okay. Yeah. Thank. Oh yeah, I merged quickly and then actually I was like, mm. yes, we need to. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it was, now it's simpler and let me check the readme now. Um, model dot supported culture. And then switch culture. Okay, now there is a new filter, switch culture, culture URL. 
that will generate the URL to switch the culture. This is the template for the culture picker. Um, the culture picker being a shape that you can add in your front-end themes to display a drop-down or a list of options to a list of links to change the culture of the website um, on the front end like if you're on an English page and you want to go to the French page you you generate this template and it will uh, loop over uh, all the available cultures for the site to let you switch um, uh, Jean-Philippe do you have a site I can point uh, you, you shared with me a link I don't remember if it was a public URL I could use I think it was just to show uh, no it's not public okay so well or a screenshot whatever but like next time I'll take a screenshot so it's just you know when you are on the website and you want to show all the available cultures and this is how it's done so there is a shape um, called this is the one you should use the you should inject the content culture picker container but if you want to theme it you can just theme with the content culture picker okay this one will load all the available cultures and then call into this one um, or oh, that's the opposite yes the opposite. that's the opposite maybe the name is confusing confuse me this is the one that you have to write if you want to customize the the UI and this one is the one you inject okay that makes sense um, and it's documented so whatever next time I read the documentation um, add Orchard Update Environment Viable section. So this was something that was supported, but we didn't document it in the docs, but just in the Docker image. If you want to change where the app data folder is, because by default it will be under the content root where your app is deployed. Okay, but if you want to put it somewhere um, that is maybe a shared drive or something you won't delete by chance when you re-upload your republish your website you can define an environment variable or should app data and then this will be either um, a local folder in the, the, the content root so by default it's called it's app data uh, or you can do a slash app data or c colon shared drive app data whatever you want There are some examples you see beautiful um, update run code and set up what what you have missed some change set before the refactor culture shape change set in the dev branch i don't understand anything you have missed some change set before the refactor culture shape yes Ooh. Oh, sorry, I jumped. Thank you. Yes, you jumped. Yes. Ah, I jumped to the fix. Da. It's because of Jean-Philippe. Um, a liquid example for culture because it's the one. Then, oh, thank you. Thank, yeah, I told. I just part index size. So, um, Dean fixed the size in the migration for the alias part. Good, because it was too small. Um, external links on readme. Um, the link is now are correctly formatted add compare attribute to password confirmation and valid so validating the passwords correctly that they match in the reset password page okay localization file publishing the ID is that when we deploy the app it will also publish the localization folder which is where the localization files now go to instead of the app data localization they go under content root localization um, it's just because it was because of Jean-Philippe who complained that what did he complain about that um, on publication he will lose his localization file or something like that because it yeah, wasn't updated. When you mount the volume uh, over it it doesn't keep the files that were already there yeah yeah because well, yeah so now it's a part of the content route um, yep and you will see what Isham has done related to that um, refactor culture picker shape that's it now we are back there I already explained update run code on startup example and formatting 
So he fixed some documentation he read and found it was wrong. He fixed it. Fixes pager in the home page from Jean Thierry. Apparently, the because of this thing, the pager was not working on the home page. Now it's fixed. Um, GraphQL load configuration for max depth complexity and feed impact. And I don't know when, but there was a demo. I think maybe Thursday or Tuesday. GraphQL didn't work anymore. And uh, or maybe it was something I did here at work, and I should be because of that setting, which was wrong. Oh no, he fixed the setting later, but yeah, because of that setting. So this is a new way to limit how complex your GraphQL can be or the depth of the tree. And you can also configure it. There are defaults, and the default was too low, were too low, I think, for our content types. Rollback transaction during indexing. Okay. Um, GraphQL don't include no content type fields in where filters. Don't include ignore content type fields in where filters. Okay, yeah, because you can you can prevent some fields from being available from GraphQL and you also remove them from the where filters, not just the results. Um, add example for content picker field. Content picker field. Oh, well, examples of how you can use the, the, the content, the field itself, the field data itself in your own templates. Because, because there were easy ways to do it, and if it's not known, then it's, it becomes complex. So, since uh, Jean Philippe found out how to make it simple, he documented it. So the next time he has to do it, it will be easy. So there is an orchard.get content item by ID, ID async, where you pass your content uh, picker field item IDs, and then you can display the content item directly with the same helpers, orchard.display async or get content item by ID async. And from liquid, you get the items by doing um, pipe content item ID from the same field and then you call shape build display and shape render uh, there is no like shape display maybe we should have a shape display which does the build display and the render like the display async here does might be super useful actually if maybe it already exists shape display let's see but Sean Philippe will do it I'm sure um, remove HTTP context access from resource manager, just a dependency issue that has been fixed, uh, actually by Isham, but um, it was easier for me to just apply the changes I wanted that just commenting and commenting on the same PR from Isham. There were some issues, so I created the PR and uh, applied a change. Add support for type shape tag helper properties. Maybe that's what I wanted to show. No, this, this was after that. Um, what is that? Typed shape tag helper properties. What did I do? Who suggested that? Or who made me think we need that? Was it Jean Philippe also? Oh my god, what did I do? Base shape tag helper. Yes, was it Jean Philippe? Jean -Philippe was it you who wanted something like that? Or was it Dean? I don't remember. I, w I would have needed that, but I don't think we talked about we, it recently. No, nah, we talked about it. Oh, what What is that commit? Let me check. There is an issue for that. Yes, add support. No, this is a PR. <sighs> Super important. Let me think. Uh, why we need that? Um, no, so someone I think it's Zeno Jean Philippe. Had to um, so render. I, I've got an, another one in light of for the um, properties on the I shape. No, yeah, nothing to do with that. Nothing the idea was that, that no, the menu, someone had to render a shape and was doing at a variable inside the attribute of the shape tag. I think it was Jean Philippe. Oh, let me show you. Um, 
I will just open code. So when you have, there is a shape tag helper. Okay, you can do shape type equals foo. Okay, that thing will render the shape type foo. Okay, Super easy. and you can do something like await new dot foo. A new dot foo maybe await display async new dot foo. Okay, you can do some oil. Oh yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So you can do something like this. Someone is writing. Is that the told you? Yeah. So you can do something like this already. Await display async await new dot foo. New is the shape factory. Foo will create a shape with the name foo, and then here you are just displaying it. Okay. You can pass parameters inside your shape like. Um, Age, size, whatever. Okay. Good. So if you want to do it there, you can do the same thing. And you can do age, color. But what happens in this case is that if Let's say you create a, a file foo.cshtml, which will be the default template for the shape foo. Inside, you can do model.age. Okay. Or you can do, uh, yeah, no, you, you don't. Okay. Good. So what happens here is that you don't have IntelliSense for age, and um, it's not typed. So this thing, actually, when you write that in Razor, because age is a property that doesn't exist, or you can even actually write it this way because we will um, change the property into an uppercase age in Pascal casing. So um, when you write that, what you get here, age, is um, the string 18, okay? Now if you do, but if you write it there, you get the integer, which is better. If you do, our age equals 18. Age here is an integer. And if you do at age, in this case, what will you get? A string. So in Razor, if the property doesn't exist on the type, which is a case shape, the tag helper doesn't have the property age because it's dynamic, it will be assigned as a string. So it will evaluate that doing a two string. Um, maybe, a, sorry, two HTML string or something like that, and give you a HTML string with the value of the, the thing here. Uh, so if you really want to get integers, um, you have two options in Razor Tag Helpers. Either the property has to exist, which we can't do, or you can bind a custom um, property, this, with a prefix. So if we um, so the idea is that when you do ASP-route, this is what happens. There is a custom um, thing that happens on ASP-route prefix to say everything that is typed inside will be a variable and will be the type will be preserved. So what I did is I just said, okay, now if you have prop age and prop color, whatever is called with prop will be converted to a property on the shape with the type of the variable that is passed. So now the at age is no more a two string of the value, it's the variable itself. So in this case, we'll keep the, the type of the that we pass here directly to the property age, which is assigned to the shape. Okay, so that's that's what this thing is done is doing, and it's done in the base uh, class for the shapes by doing properties new dictionary string object now, and by by where is that uh, here on the properties dictionary, it's bound with the property prefix which is prop dash. Okay, so it's just saying everything that is assigned to a prop dash will be bound to the dictionary which is here. That's what I do. That's, um, there was no issue and this is explained here. So in this case it's a string, in this case it's an integer. So it can be super useful if we want to pass um, 
So the idea is not for integers and string value, but I think in the case of Jean-Philippe, he wanted to pass a custom object and you always got the two string value of that. So now you can pass custom complex objects to your shape types. Okay, that's the idea. Cool. Yes, culture info. And that's why we changed after the culture view model because you needed a view model, I don't know for what. Now you can pass the culture info directly to your shape. Okay, beautiful. Um, was there. Support for type shape tag helper properties. Um, read me for health check. I fix the PR. So we have an entry point for the read me for health check. This module enables a health checks feature from ASP.NET Core. Okay, this is just enabling the middleware. And I pointed to the documentation from ASP.NET Core. So you have all the info you want from ASP.NET Core. And just mentioning that the default endpoint is health slash live. And then you do whatever you want with that. Um, the next uh, uh, thing could be how to create custom health check health checks um, to plug directly to this endpoint which we should have like database health check uh, file system stuff like that because by default there is nothing configured for the middleware handle unauthorized results so in all PR um, the idea is that um, we need to return um, the forbid or challenge results and not just unauthorized the idea is that if you are authenticated we can just return forbid you don't have access to this page if you're not authenticated, we return a challenge, which will be then redirecting you to the logging page to give you a chance to authenticate before telling you you don't have access to that. And um, the idea is that we should do, instead of, in every controller where, where, we, sh where we return unauthorized, most of them, there might be reasons where to return unauthorized, but most of them, when we want to display a form, we should do that, call this method instead not just here. So this is for the content items so far, which is a good, a good first implementation, but we should do it differently. And then um, Thierry also uh, fixed the rest of the code, the diagnostics, um, to be able to customize forbidden and unauthorized. Um, workflows internationalization by Ludo. Um, so what it did is add a display text for every task or event, okay, with a localized text, and also um, changed that. So it was computed from the name of the task. Now it's no, you can change it and you can localize it. There will be more strings uh, to localize now every task, every event. Um, sort groups alphabetically. So when we display the features that are grouped, the groups are grouped alphabetically, are ordered alphabetically, sorry. Remove unnecessary dependencies. Um, yes, so remove some dependencies from the, lo the localization core project which was not good. And also he moved this file um, to, to a single location instead of duplicating it. And we are now referencing this file um, as is. So you see here, include a link. It's a link to the file, which means the file, there is a single file, but we use it in two different projects. So we don't have a dependency between setup and the core localization uh, module. This is not a module, this is a project, but we don't want, but the file here, the file here is in the localization module, okay? Uh, list localization, oh, I merged this one, an old one to localize the list. Uh, also this one from Jean-Philippe, add localization set content picker field um, to select a content item with culture agnostic, in a culture agnostic way. The content picker field being you select a culture of a content item like a page that makes setting the page title format accessible to accessible to site administrators uh, the idea is that instead of having a simple 
if instead of displaying so before in the layout we will take the site name and make it part of the page title and separate all the segments of the title with a dash now you can um, render this shape page title which will uh, evaluate a string which will be a, la um, a liquid template that will represent how your title should be okay and there is a default where is the default um, this is default so now when you change you can change the the way the title is rendered from the settings and this is a default template page this is the same as before but now it's available in the admin um, so you take the site name and it says take the site name and then every segment of the titles um, separate it by dash and the site name should be after everything and if you want the site name to be before everything you can put before here and if you want your site name sorry your page title to contain the site name um, and be separate by the page title then by the content title uh, with a different text you can change now the separator here and if you just want the page title as well sorry the content title as your page title you can just say you can just say I think nothing I think nothing or a string empty no that will not work I have to check that now can we not display the site name as a title of the current page should be aware maybe by putting the empty string I have to check we'll see but it should be doable at least you can change the position of the uh, site name in the page title uh, from the settings not having to change the layout um, remove duplicate resource setting okay and then we have fixing the graphql max death content fields indexing from Jasmine. so now you can do sql queries on the content fields and he added some documentation with the table schema somewhere here so you know what queries you can do there is an example Um, edit on direction to respect the localization part culture so there is a new aspect which is culture aspect so you can resolve that for a content item and it will tell you what is the culture of the content item um, if it has a custom one or the default one of the site and then from that what happens is um, like the markdown field edition will use the culture the direction of the content item um, properties dictionary to eye shape interface which is different so, um, so now so shapes can have properties but it was not um, something defined so the dynamic shapes could have custom dynamic properties now it's part of the interface that a shape an eye shape has a set of classes a set of attributes and now a set of properties so we have a bag of property string object to pass uh, always available menu tweaks to fix some issues with the tilde slash um, apply cache control address to non resized images um, from din so now you can define the cache headers for images which are not resized but still served as media items that's what I thought we had that but we didn't so it fixes two issues actually that were filed for that um, this is a branch 
and taxonomy machine required validation doesn't work with unique solution with unique options and now it's fixed new PR from temp code good good so now we have questions and demos demos who does a demo Dean Uh, yeah, sure. Um, it's probably nothing you haven't seen before, but... Good. Um, we'll be quick. <laughs> we'll be quick. <laughs> um, so we talk about um, uh, as a blob and, and resizing again. Um, so we have a... Site. Oh, that's not working. Maybe it works this time. So we have a site, um, and the media is now stored on the Azure blob um, and retrieved to the local host. Um, so are you sharing something? If you are sharing your screen, well. Ah, sorry, you're not seeing the screen? It. No, we are still looking at Sebastian's screen. It's ah, a pretty full well. screen. Let's yeah, it's, the screen then. It's, it's all right. Okay, let me know when you're seeing the screen. Yep, I got it. Yep, I can see also. Images. Oh yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah, but you fixed it. So I fixed it. <laughs> some more. <laughs> you did it and again. We have some more images. <laughs> um, it's so. It's probably easier to show you. There's now a couple of folders in the, the root folder. MS Cache for Microsoft. Microsoft yeah. Cache. For, for a media store. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so we have the IS Cache, which we've had for a while now, and also the, the media store cache, um, which is what is stored in your blob storage now gets stored here automatically by the uh, middleware. Um, the well, the, the middleware by the media cache feature. Yes. Um, let me find some code. This is beautiful. Uh, I will do well. a poster and I will write media cache feature on that. <laughs> and I will explain it every day. 300 commits um, later. Yeah. So, we now have this um, middleware, which if you're using Blob, will get turned on, if you're using the Azure Blob feature, will get turned on automatically. Um, if you're not using Azure Blob, then this is not going to be turned on, It's nothing's going to happen with regards to it. So this middleware happens first um, in the pipeline um, when you request a file from the site. Um, so if we look at, say, the URL for this one, um, the the liquid template served up this URL. It said I'd like a resized image. Um, the browser went to your local server and said, I need this. Um, it comes in here and it has a look. Is it one of the files that we support? Is it um, under the slash media path? Um, it asks the, the, the file store if it's cached. Um, if it is, then it just passes it straight on to the next piece of middleware here. And the next piece of middleware is image sharp, which will then check its cache for the resized image. If it has it, serve it up. Um, if it doesn't, it will resize it on the fly and then serve it up. Um, and if it is an Im image at all, if it's, for example, a PDF, it will go to the next piece of middleware after that, which is the static file middleware. So I'll clear a few caches and you can see how it all goes.
So this is the image sharp one. So that's the image sharp one. Um, and actually, we can probably do this other one from um, a little bit of a tiny little bit of UI that's happened. Yeah, a tiny little bit instead of <laughs> of that's doing UI composition just for this thing for now. Yeah. Um, so this one at the moment will will clear the the media store cache, the the MS cache. Um, and we'll do another one for the image sharp another time. It's it's a bit more difficult with image sharp because the um, the files are um, stored as a hash value of the command string rather than just as a file name. Um, so if we clear this now um, and all these files are stored in um, in blob, then it's not going to be a super quick refresh of the page. But it's not bad. Um, so we can now go back and see here that um, the the files are now stored locally, cached locally, um, and that Image Sharp has also done its job. And somewhere deep down in the um, in the hash key, we'll find a copy of an image. There we are. Um, and that's about it. Good. Really, that's what it does. Yeah, all of that just for this. Oh my God, it's a lot of <laughs> just to display images, three hundred commits. Um, but that's perfect. It works very well, and that fixes solves all the issues. And now, next time you implement the S three provider, that's it. Uh, yeah, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> My day yeah. job has actually got me working on that at the moment. Um, yeah. I don't know. Is that something that, you, that nope. these, is this three stuff something you would want in um, nope. what you'd call? Nope. Just Azure. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. Thanks a lot. Um, and the design is beautiful. How it works internally, reusing all the pieces. That's all good. Thanks a lot. No, um, thank uh, so. The question is that now, next, oh, we'll have to find you something challenging, even more challenging, right? <laughs> because we are stepping up every time the, the difficulty of the features. So um, how many commits this time, next time? <laughs> um, so Jasmine, you want to show your SQL things, tables, and a query? Or to skip? Oh, Jasmine is gone. Oh, he bay. No, he's there. He moved to presenter. Uh, yeah, okay. One query, boom. Give me all the content items with a field that has this value. Uh, okay. Can you see my screen now or? Nope. 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 <clears throat> nope. Maybe I need to share back. Nope. 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 Yes. Nope. Loading. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. So now we have a new module, which is uh, content field indexing. Um, we made this a feature of um, the content field module, Good job. which is there. I had it a README, um, which um, shows uh, a quick sample of what you can do with, with that. Um, Text field index. I'm going to enable this because it's work. Um, then I need to publish a content item. Yeah. Let me see if I have one hack, hack me here. Okay. So we'll do exactly what is uh, what is there.
Oh, let's change this for. And now let's go see in the database. So yeah, now you have um, the text field index, which should have indexed the, those two new content items. And you can see here, um, it says it's publication latest. You can see that one is USA and one is FR, because I, I had um, just the country codes as values for my predefined fields. And um, we could also uh, just draft one to see what it is going to do. If I draft one, then I'm going to have um, the two versions. Two versions, yeah, the publish and the latest. Uh, awesome, awesome. How much SQL did you have to write to handle that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is no SQL. What? Because, what? Yeah, there was no SQL. It's, it's like magic. Me. Yeah, it's magic. It's just the indexing provider that does that. It, and it's uh, Yes SQL that does that. There is no <laughs> SQL to write because you are using Yes SQL. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And let's try with with uh, quickly just just do something uh, because people will need to <clears throat> create queries to be able to query this. Oh, you don't have a SQL feature. Yeah, you need to enable the SQL queries and then create a query. I'm going to copy my example, uh, which is there. Now I'm thinking, is it better to have three fields for content type, content part, content field? Yes, it's better because we know. No, oh, yeah, I don't know. Or, or will it be better to have one field, which is the name, in terms of performance? Now it's done, it's done, and it's good, but I'm, I'm wondering what would have been better in terms of, in terms of usage. You would have said, like, um, acme.acme.country. That would have been weird, maybe. Yeah, there's, there's a mistake there in the query. <laughs> I thought that I had fixed that. But... There we go. And you have three records. And ideally, what you will do is also filter on the value, like country equal, well, text equals FR, or and then do whatever you want. Yeah, we could do. Uh, or return the document IDs or the content ID directly to load the documents that are related to that, things like this. Yeah. Yeah, but I think uh, the query itself already does that. But uh, if you check this one here, it's going to return the documents. Mm -hmm. But instead um, of returning star, you can return yeah. just the field you need. Yeah, we'll do that content item ID. No, I think it's document ID. Also, we have uh, we have both. Well, sure, no? Yeah, we have both. Okay. But let's see here. Yeah, we have both. No, yes, but you have both. The question is when you check the load the documents, it expects one of the two. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a document ID. So, yeah, if you return documents here, you will need to do a content item ID. I no, think. document ID. And it's even written in, right. the, yeah, right. in the span. Right, yeah, it's a document ID. That's how I would have done it if I had written the feature, which I did. But I might not be consistent with myself. And we could do a query on that afterward. It's just a matter of doing a liquid template. Yeah, that's okay. And and recall the query. Yeah, that's okay. Something like that. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. That fixes many issues. So you don't need Lucene anymore. You can throw away Lucene. You can do queries in the. Oh, and the question for next week is how do you. Um, query content items with two different text fields. Okay, that's your goal for next week. <laughs> Aha. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah.
Thank you. Um, Jean-Philippe, should I add an index to the localization set content picker field? Um, do we have one for the content picker field? Is there index for the content picker field? Jasmine? I'm not sure. Well, you did that, so I mean... <laughs> uh, let's check. <coughs> you did the feature. I'm not sure. Um, orchard... I did that like uh, six months ago. <laughs> oh, we managed it today. Super new. Oh, the thing that uh, Jean-Philippe uh, had? No, you. Dude, let me show you. So you made a feature in the orchard.content fields. You just demoed it. Yeah. And then in the in the services, where do you put that? The startup? It's a, yeah, it's, a, it, it's an indexing, yeah. yeah. Oh, but yeah, we had a feature, yeah. It's maybe I, index. Maybe, yeah, maybe I did not understand well. Content picker feature. field index provider. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now I want to see what I, I forgot to look at it, but I want to see that. I want to see that. For each content item ID is result a new index. So yes, okay. So yeah. how it is handled is that there are multiple records for each. And that's good. I think we talked about it. Yeah, this is something I, I had afterward because I was using a single column and concatenating. Yeah, that's every, bad. Yeah, and then I changed this part of that, yeah. that version. So that's good. Um, so yes, you could do that, uh, Jean Philippe. Content ID, yes, and that's why also the content item version ID is very important because um, it's required in this case. In the case of the culture agnostic one, I don't think this is required, the content item version ID. Because you just point to content item ID for the other one, for the field. No, no, no. The actually, actually, I'm wrong. The value that you store is a content item ID, but that is still valid because the local, the, the yeah, the owner of the field is that version. It's just that the selected content item ID is that. So there is an issue here, um, Jasmine. It's missing some value here because the content picker field is not pointing just to a Maybe we no, 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 you're right. Oh, I'm, I'm lost. I, wow. Ooh. Uh, brain explosion. Yes, sexy content item ID. Yes, this is correct because of, um, a culture is for a content item ID. That's good. Okay. Yeah, I this say is what else. I was thinking. <laughs> I was not sure myself too, but uh, nah, it's for, just, the, for the culture part. Uh, yeah. Orchard one versus Orchard core, not diff they are different, and that's how it, that, that, that works differently. Um, just want to do a quick look on two weeks mm -hmm. ago because I wanted to demo something and I forgot. So did I commit anything? Oh yes, I wanted to demo that, to demo that. Um, I won't have time. I wanted to demo um, an authenticated uh, authentication federation tenant um, with multi-tenancy. Uh, so, I will write it in my notes for next time. Um, nine, ten. Demo. Okay. And I wanted to show what Isham had done. So Isham is currently working on the Orchard translation um, repository, orchardcore.translations. 
is ready so it should be merged soon this one boom because the issue with Isham is that I told him create a PR 10 times and then you will be able to see the CI working and your script running and he kept not doing that so I'm like okay I created for you and now you can see what you want which is the CI running here show or check so what this PR does just three files so this is a template new get packages okay uh, well new spec file to create a package and a, a yaml file that is already on the branch to run the ci okay and then this PowerShell and this PowerShell script will look at all the available folders which are in the localization um, folder and you see here all the culture IDs which are here so it will take every folder and create a zip file containing the content of the folder which is the set of PO files for every module which means there will be a NuGet package for each of these folders and each NuGet package will only contain content files okay no code just content files in the localization folder in their localization folder well localization slash the language uh, such that when we point to this new get package file from a web project it will extract the content in the localization folder okay this is where we put our localization files so now if you just need to to configure your admin in a specific language you will just have to point to the new get package that corresponds to your language I assume we might also be able to create a meta package that will contain all the languages totally doable that's just static files um, but at least now to be able to include the language you just have to, to point to that so what the script does is um, browse all these folders and create new get packages so in the end when the script runs in the CI in the artifacts folder uh, that the CI finds here this is what is generated or should call a translation dot the language name and a version okay and the build number uh, by the way we need uh, maybe to change this build number to be a prefix to with zeros uh, or seed the build number with a number that starts with 1000 for instance or more um, and I will do that so you see these packages and uh, if I download one content localization he and these are all the files so referencing this file will give you all the necessary um, PO files for this culture it will be super useful and because it's CI every time uh, there will be a new translation available um, so every time there will be a new translation available, a new file updated from any language, Crowdin submits a PR to the repository and then we'll merge the PR to deploy automatically. Well, we can measure PR first to a specific branch to get it running. And then when we measure master, it will be deployed automatically to NuGet. So you can then update that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So good job from Isham also. Um, and that's it. Questions, comments? Here there are query questions. Uh, do we have any uh, no localization is there is a new field, so yes, the idea is that if you have a new field you can add a new index table that will make sense uh, the same the same way you did and because there is no base class there should be uh, you will have to copy paste one of the index classes to make it complete okay good then um, so see you on Thursday and thanks everyone for joining and for your contributions bye bye Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.